Hello everyone, this is S. Divya from Biotechnica. Welcome you all to the PYQ series. Today, we are going to discuss regarding Unit 2C of your CSANet Life Science Syllabus, that is Genome Organization. Genome Organization is one of the important topic, uh, not only from CSA point of view, but also in general aspect. Because Without understanding genome organization, it becomes difficult for you to understand and correlate the topics of Unit 3, as Unit 3 is all about central dogma of life. So, without understanding the organization, the processes involved in the central dogma, that is replication, transcription, it will become difficult for you to correlate it. So, uh, when it comes to examination point of view, yes, you can always expect questions from here in the form of part C. And the mode of uh, questions will be 90% statement based questions can be expected from here. Every time, whenever you appear for a CSANet exam. So based on that, today I have uh, accumulated few questions. So let's have a look on to that. So the very first question is, the nucleosome is the fundamental subunit of chromatin in eukaryotes. And here are some statements made regarding the nucleosome. Statement A, a typical nucleosome contains approximately 200 base pairs of DNA and two copies of each histone. Statement B, 146 base pair length of DNA per nucleosome core particle is strictly maintained across the organism. Statement C. The histone octamers are not conserved during or after replication, but H3 to H4 to tetramers are. Statement D. Variants have been identified for all the core histones excepting histone H3. And last statement is, while wrapping around the core histones, the structure of DNA is altered at the middle of the nucleosome and it exhibits increase in the number of base pairs per ton. So based upon the statements provided, you need to identify the correct combination of statement. So the answer to this question will be statement A, C and E. So these are the three statements which are known to be correct. Obviously, the nucleosome is composed of 200 base pairs of DNA and the histone proteins exist in two copies. Fine. So, the statement A is correct. Statement C, the histone octamers are not conserved during or after replication. But this H3, H4 tetramers are. The reason is that this is considered to be highly conserved at the time of replication. It plays a crucial role in maintaining the chromatin structure as well as epigenetic information. And not only that, adding to the existing points, yes, this tetramer forms the central core of nucleosome because it plays a prominent role in uh, its assembly, disassembly as well as positioning of nucleosomes. Then the statement E is also correct. So we will check out how the statement E is correct. Then we will be checking why statement B and D are incorrect. So statement C, E, they state that while wrapping around the core histones, the structure of DNA is altered at the middle of the nucleosome core particle and exhibits increased in the number of base pairs per ton. So how does it happen? See, when it comes to a nucleosome structure, DNA in the linker region is around having 10 base pairs per ton. That resembles to that of the normal B form of the DNA helix. But as the DNA wraps around the histone core, what happens? There undergoes a conformational change because of which there will be increase in the base pairs per ton. Not much, but yes, around 10.5 to 11. 
This conformational change is what we call as superhelical DNA or we call it as DNA supercoiling. It results from histone mediated bending as well as twisting. Not only that, it is this kind of twisting is important for compacting the DNA into a chromatin so that it can easily regulate the access to genetic information. Tighter wrapping will stabilize the nucleosome, thereby contributing to overall chromatin organization. Next, why the other statements are incorrect? So, as you can see, here the table provides you with some histone variants along with their function of H2A, H2B, H3 and H4 and H1. So, all the histones that is right from H1, H2A, H2B, H3 and H4 is having the variants present. And specifically when it comes to H3, SENPA is very important because it is required at the time of kinetochore assembly and chromosome segregation during mitosis. So, obviously the statement is incorrect. Next. The length of the DNA wrapped around the nucleosome core particle is relatively conserved across many eukaryotic organisms, but it is not strictly maintained. The reason is that the linker DNA that is present between the nucleosomes can be shorter or longer, maybe 20 to 60 base pairs long. Adding to that, there are some histone variants, for example H2AZ, they can also lead to variations in the length of the DNA that is wrapped around the histone core. So, the length of the DNA per nucleosome core particle is considered to be conserved, no doubt in that. But, the variations do happen depending upon the genomic as well as epigenetic context. So, that's why statement B is also incorrect. Next. Next question is, the following statements are made with reference to the structure of nucleosomes. The histone tetramer in the core of nucleosome comprises of these many histone proteins. The N-terminal tails of core histones are believed to stabilize 30 nanometer fiber of nucleosomal DNA by their interaction with adjacent nucleosomes. The post-translational modification of N-terminal tail as well as globular domain modulate the transcription event. According to the zigzag model of 30 nanometer fiber, the linker DNA circles around the central axis as the DNA moves from one nucleosome to the next. Here also you need to identify the correct combination of statements. So, here the correct combinations are statement B and statement C. So, by looking into the statements, the very first mistake that can be easily pointed out is this one. Because you all have studied that histone is not in the form of a tetramer. They exist in the form of an octamer. So, that's why this statement is eliminated. Then, yes. Uh, since histone is a protein, it will be having an N-terminal region as well as a C-terminal region. So, this N-terminal region is prone to be undergoing post-translational modifications more. And they are known to stabilize this 30 nanometer fiber through their interaction with adjacent nucleosomes. So, that's the reason statement B and C are correct. And the last statement is all about the two models you might have studied, we have two models to describe 30 nanometer fiber. One is solenoid model, another one is uh, zigzag model. So, this is not according to the zigzag model, rather this is according to the solenoid model. So, we will have a check on to these statements once again. So, if you see, this is an octameric core of histone proteins, right? 
So all the histones, whether you, you take into consideration H2A, H2B, H3 and H4 is considered to be the core histones and all of them existing as dimers. So when four dimers will combine together, what we will get? Octameric nucleosome core. Then the linker DNA is present into which the linker histones can be bound, H1 or H5. The linker DNA circles around the central axis as the DNA moves from one nucleosome to the next. So that is the feature of solenoid model. So that's why the state, last statement was incorrect. Majority of modifications takes place in the tail region. But few modifications you can also find it in the histone fold domains. So if you look into the structure of histone proteins, where whatever the histones you take into consideration, we have an N-terminal tail, histone fold domain and a C-terminal tail. This histone fold domain is very crucial for interaction between the histones when they are bound with the DNA. And this N-terminal tail is the one that is more prone to undergo post-translational modification. Because when they are packaged within the DNA, it is the N-terminal tail that is exposed out. Then the modifications. Majority of modifications takes place in H3 followed to that H4 then we have H2B and H2A. In some exceptional cases you can find that the modifications will also take place within the histone fold domain that is the uh, methylation taking place at the lysine residue. So that's why those statements were correct. Looking onto the comparison of a solenoid to a zigzag model, solenoid model explains you with an helical conformation. And if we visualize uh, into this image, that is the image that shows uh, central axis of the fiber, you will find that linker DNA is surrounding the central axis. Similarly, if you consider zigzag, the pattern looks in a zigzag manner. And in this case, you will find that linker DNA is crossing the central axis. That's the reason the comparison between the two models that was given in the statement was incorrect. Then the last question is regarding the chromatin remodeling complex within the eukaryotes. Chromatin remodeling completely alters or slides the nucleosome but cannot displace it. It is an energy driven developmentally regulated active process. Histone acetylation is considered to be a reversible process in which each direction of the reaction is catalyzed by different enzymes. In general, acetylation of histone proteins reduces the affinity for DNA, destabilizes the chromatin structure, thereby causing transcriptional repression. Phosphorylation of serine 1 present in H2A is associated with transcription activation. Here, the same thing you need to identify the correct combination of statements. So the answer over here is statement B, C and E are correct. Yes, chromatin remodeling means what? Where you are remodeling the chromatin or restructuring the chromatin to regulate the gene expression pattern. And obviously it is an ATP dependent process. So what kind of modifications you can take place? It can alter the nucleosome. It can slide the nucleosome as well as it can displace the nucleosome. So that's why statement A is incorrect. Histone acetylation is a reversible process. Yes, when required acetyl group can be added and when required acetyl group can be removed. Because for addition and removal corresponding enzymes are available. So that's why the statement B and C are correct. Acetylation reduces the affinity for DNA. Now this is incorrect. Now why this is incorrect? I'll come to that point. 
and the last statement is phosphorylation of serine 1 of histone H2A is associated with transcription activation. So that is correct. I will provide you a table where it is shown. So as you can see chromatin remodeling is a kind of dynamic modification of chromatin structure that allow access of the condensed genomic DNA to the regulatory transcription machinery proteins thereby controlling the gene expression. This kind of remodeling is carried out by different enzymes as I told you before. For example, histone acetyl transferase which can transfer the acetyl group, deacetylase that can remove the acetyl group, methyl transferase that can transfer the methyl group, kinases that can transfer the phosphate group. And all this process is an ATP dependent process. So it can either move the nucleosomes, it can eject the octamer or it can restructure the nucleosomes. So if you look into the structure, these are the three major nucleosome remodeling activities taken place. It can slide the nucleosome a bit. It can eject the nucleosome. You can see here 3 is there, here 2 is there. So 1 is removed. Or it can be a exchange of a dimer. That means uh, we have seen so many histone variants are there. So those histone variants can come over here instead of the original one. So those exchange can also remodel the chromatin condensation process. Next point was acetylation will be enhancing the gene expression. How? We know that histones is composed of lysine and arginine. Those are positively charged amino acid. They will be interacting with the DNA via the phosphate group present in the DNA. So in that case what happens? These two interactions are stable. Next, when this acetyl group is added, what happens? The positive charge that is present on the histones will be neutralized. Because of which what happens? This interaction will be loosened up. Thus, chromatin will undergo relaxation. Now that is associated with transcriptional activation. Because when the chromatin structure is loosened up, it will allow accessibility to transcription factors and the necessary enzymes that are responsible for carrying out gene expression. So that's why acetyl group is not repressing the transcription, rather it is enhancing the transcription rate. This is the table where we can see that different modifications are mentioned. For example, acetylated lysine, in all the four core histones at different positions. Phosphorylated serine and threonine, methylated arginine, methylated lysine and ubiquitinated lysine. Majority of cases, the modification appears to be activation. In few cases like methylation at H3 position, H4 position, ubiquitination at H2A, it results in repression. Remaining all are activation. And in our question it was serine 1 H2A phosphorylated. So this results in activation. So that's it. These are some uh, important questions. Uh, like this you can expect questions in every exam. So you have to be very clear with the core of this topic. Every concept has to be clear. Then only you will be able to fetch mark from this. So thank you so much everyone. See you again in the next session.